Hey guys, welcome to Bonafide Adventures. This is part 12. I managed to get 12 videos out of this <laughs> and plenty more. Well, um, I'm going to do a little painting so I thought I'd uh, bring you guys along. I got this uh, <clears throat> uh, muffler prepped, taped off the parts I don't want painted. And I'm kind of glad I had uh, took these guys out because I didn't like the fact that there was still paint on them. I don't want paint on brass. I mean, bra it, like painting brass is like painting um, gold. <laughs> but I pulled this sucker out, and wouldn't you know it, it had a little screen on it. It was all kicked up. I've been soaking it. But I'm glad I did. I pulled the other one out too. I left that big one in because it's perfectly fine, nice and clean. But uh, yeah, let's let's do some painting. Now I've already wiped it down with acetone. Ooh, you're way up there. You're still way up there. <laughs> Got to do some editing now. <clears throat> So I uh, wiped it all down with acetone. You, before you really paint anything, you gotta have acetone. And this is self-etching primer. Etches and primes in one easy step. Binds to metal, aluminum, and more. To be honest with you, I've never really used this stuff, but. I do know you just go real lightly with it. Yeah. Just, just lightly. You're not looking for a coat. You're just getting it on there for starters. Oh, it's already starting to look good. Smells bad. That should be enough, right? You get the point. All right, the etching primer is looking beautiful. Came out beautiful. Um. I was inside the camper there, uh, editing the uh, the last video, part 11. This is part 12. I'm cranking these babies out, let me tell you. Um, mostly because I'm hoping, if this thing does work out, that uh, I'll really appreciate the royalties for years to come on this Jet John build. Hopefully people will enjoy watching. Anyhow... There is a channel that I watch, and he's recently reached out and said hi and, and given me lots of helpful advice. It's called Rum and Boats, and he looks like he's got like a boat business or something. I don't know the exact story, but uh, you can check him out. He had purchased a, uh, a hydro, oh jeez, I'm going to screw it up. I'll just put it at the bottom. It's like a old-fashioned, back-in-the-day, fast boat, you know. When I was a kid, boy, people... <laughs> I can remember the guys would put V8s on small little boats and just race them like crazy. They don't really do that much anymore. Well, it's the same with cars, too. But he reached out, and he made a comment about the jet pump here, the pump jet. And uh, he was saying, you know, helpful advice. And I do really appreciate it, my man, about this. Uh, I just wanted to say here on the video that I'm, I'm going to hold on to it until I get back to work. I work at a farm. 
and they do have a small garage with a bunch of good tools because uh, the farm does have like 20 tractors that they have to maintain plus equipment so uh, <clears throat> they also have a, a part-time mechanic and he's basically retired and he just comes in for a few hours to do oil changes and basic work <clears throat> I tried to get him to rebuild the motor for me, but he, he pretty much kind of laughed at me. He's like, no, I don't have time for that. And Now that I'm into it, I know why. He was smarter than I thought he was. <laughs> so, anyhow, going to save that. And he gave a suggestion about leaving the oil ports in this. This is what sits on the engine. And the carbs sit on top of this. And it used to just squirt a little bit of oil. But this uh, Polaris engine was built in the 90s. And uh, this technology was brand new at the time. And uh, it was like, you just leave them alone and, you know, and basically just leave them alone the way they are. And, and, uh, I'm not quite really building this boat to ever sell. <clears throat> this is completely custom for my needs and for the rest until my retirement. It's lightweight and I could pull it behind the truck. I used to have a bass boat. I had a 16 foot bass boat and uh, it was just too heavy. It was uh, the camper pretty much. That's pretty much it for what the truck can hold. So uh, right now the whole system is uh, super sweet. I can fit in two parking spots perfectly without overhanging or anything. It's a perfect and I can there could be cars parked and I can still swing in and, and park in those two spots too. So it, it really uh, I put a lot of thought in uh, the whole system and the way it should be. <clears throat> I was going to go with like a, a large canoe or a kayak or something, but my brother gave me the boat back and, and I'm so glad he did because uh, it really is working out. And if I can just get this motor um, working, uh, <sighs> I, I couldn't imagine having any other boat ever again. I am going to retire in a big old sport fishing boat in some marina somewhere so it'll probably never leave you know one of them type deals sitting on the back drinking beer complaining about the government I mean that sounds like paradise to me I got the shirts ready and everything <laughs> so yeah man thanks for the advice I just want to let you know that totally appreciate every word you wrote um, any guy any of you guys re, uh, write something I totally appreciate it. That's how I learn. Basically, uh, YouTube, YouTube has taught me more than any public school ever could. So, I have this, uh, this is just regular old primer. And, uh, you know, rattle can primer. And I figured I'm just going to throw a coat on. Can you see how it's like, you know, I don't want to have to sand it. So multiple layers ought to take a lot of this away. It's going to be beautiful. I just know it. So I'm going to add a, a layer of this on top of the layer of that. It can't hurt. You don't have to if you're doing something like this. It's overkill, but that seems to be the story of my life. So, yeah. Once again, shake it up real good. Drop it a few times. <laughs> and just like same as that one just you know you're not trying to get a pretty coat just get it on there always go for the the insides first be before you do any of the finish work so that way you don't end up with too much paint you know I'm, I'm sure you guys all know this I mean it's all over YouTube, but who knows?
almost forgot to turn the music off. Today's uh, Pantera, uh, yeah, Pantera kind of day. Unfortunately, uh, camper came. I was cranking it for a while. But, uh, good news, I got the bolt out. <laughs> yeah, it was crusty. Looks like it's a little bit bent, too. That might have been because of me. But, uh, yeah, that... <laughs> yeah, that's crusty in there. I might have to, uh... Redrill it, you know? Make sure it's spotlessly clean. I got these spotlessly clean. I still don't know what the hell this was for. It has a really small hole. But, uh, I'll figure that out later when I read the manual and stuff. I got the, uh, manual to put us all back together. I mean, it's not up here. It's in there. <laughs> so, yeah. Was that all I wanted to tell you guys? Still painting the muffler. Yep. I had to turn my music off. I mentioned earlier, <laughs> I'm listening to Primus, not Pandora or whatever stupid thing I said. I'm just going to leave it in there because I am what I am and that's what I am. <laughs> Wasn't gifted with a beautiful mind. But anyhow, um, it's windy. Storm's coming tonight. Branches you can see on the camper are already falling down. A whole lot of fun to be in the camper when a uh, branch comes down. But I'm continuing the cleaning. I'm going to blow off painting. Well, I might do some priming, but not finish coat painting. I gave this a little sand to get all the bugs and everything else fuzz off it. So it's ready to go, but I'm going to hold off until after the storm. It's going to be like three days, though. Whatever. But. Seeing that Mr. Ramen Boats has reached out and said hello, I now have a question for him. Hopefully he'll be able to answer it. He's a lot smarter than I am. I got these, uh, these are those one-way valves for, uh, they sit under the carburetor so when the engine is running, it only goes in one direction. <laughs> um, so I'm cleaning them up. You can see they're pretty, pretty grody. And uh, I got one done here. You know, I just hit it with a little, little 220 grit. It's it's clean enough for me. I I don't need anything more than that. But the thing is, is it this base seems to have a coating on it. And uh, you can see that it's been like painted on or dipped or something. And I don't know if it's because they infused this plastic part with this, which I can only assume is aluminium. Um, I scratched it up and now I'm wondering, is that going to cause an issue? I don't think it will, but I'm going to put the question out to you guys. Um... I should be, if life treats me well and the government keeps us all going, I should be putting this back together in about six months. Hopefully in six months I'll be able to throw everything, all the motor together. Maybe sooner. Sooner would be better. But I'm worried about this coating now. So, if any of you guys can reach out and let me know uh, if that's an issue because I'm thinking it's not I think it's like some sort of a lacquer varnish probably lacquer but why did they put it on there and I found out my little reeds 
have to be replaced. I probably should have replaced them anyhow. The motor is uh, 30 years old. You can see this one here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it, even the corner's broken out on that one. So that hell has to be replaced. One of the reasons I'm doing this. Putting, uh, you know, when you take everything apart, you know, you get a chance to inspect things like that. So I think it's very important to, to disassemble everything. I got more parts in there. This has come out ready to go. My battery died though, because uh, we're just cleaning the faces off. I mean, they're not bad now, but, you know, it would be, I think it would be the best thing to do to make sure gaskets sit well and all that good stuff. Just 220 grit, nothing, nothing aggressive. You can see on this one for sure, you see how that, you know, there's some, there's something there that should be removed, as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully, I'm not damaging it. Um, yeah. Quick update. Hey, I'm plugging along. Uh, I'm going to finish this uh, video up. Because, uh, it looks nasty, but the wet, uh, radar doesn't show any rain. It's not supposed to be till 6 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock now, but... As you guys can see, I've been doing still more cleaning and prep work. I, I have to I clean these up. I'm going to cover them with tape before I paint them. So that way, hopefully the uh, gasket will uh, stick real nice. But I've got all these parts cleaned. and It's a good thing too, boy. My fingertips hurt. But before I say goodbye... I'm going to give you a cliffhanger. I just saw the best video ever. It was very short. It was like motorcycle. So it has nothing to do with boats or anything. But uh, he showed himself a fantastic redneck parts cleaner. And <laughs> I'm going to make it. And so the next video you see, hopefully, it's going to rain a lot. But hopefully I'll be able to get, get it done. Um, is that parts cleaner... And working on the carburetor. So carburetor will be next. I'll just do these off camera. You don't need to watch that crap. I had a hell of a time getting a mouse nest out of the muffler. I hope it's out now. So. Everything's plugging along. Catch you next time. With the redneck. Parts cleaner. <laughs> Wait until you see this thing. Stay tuned. Later.